Well, hi, Chris. Um, I'm the social worker here from uh, here at Mile, Mile Square, and I was told to come pop in and talk to you uh, by Dr. Corbett. Hi. Hi. Yeah, so what, um, so thank you so much for staying and being willing to talk to me. What did Dr. Corbett uh, say to you before he told me to come in? What do you, what do you know about why I'm in here? Not, I guess not a whole lot. I'm a little confused. I know I did, you know, some paperwork at the beginning of the appointment and we talked a little bit mm -hmm. about some of the physical health issues I was having. And then he just asked me to wait because he was going to go get somebody, but then like, it's like 2.45 and I have to pick my kid up at four at school and I need to take the bus to get there. So I guess I'm just wondering like, what's going on. Yeah. So how about if it, and you tell me if this is okay, if we just set the clock that we're not going to talk for more than about 15 minutes today, would that work for you? If we just, yeah, set the yeah. clock. To, okay. So we can, Good. we can be done at three. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So doctor, what Dr. Corbett told me is, is that he gave you a little bit of information about how the way you answered those questions, what that means. And so what, what did you hear him telling you? Well, just that maybe the, the way I'm taking my, my pills and smoking, smoking weed is, uh -huh. is, I don't know that it might cause problems in the future or something. I mean, I told him like, I just do this occasionally and mm -hmm. it's helpful and I don't have a lot of other ways to chill out. I'm not a drinker. And so I don't, you know, I don't drink alcohol, but I just do these things and they help because mm -hmm. then I can sleep and it, I feel less anxious. Mm -hmm. So you use the pills to help take the edge off sleep, feel less anxious. Mm -hmm. And it was confusing to you why he said that it might be a problem. It was, it was a bit of a surprise. Yeah. I mean, I just don't, I mean, I can see like, it's not like I'm <laughs> addicted to something. So I guess I'm, you know, just wondering, I mean, I'm here, I'll listen. Uh -huh. I, I just don't know that. I don't know if it's a problem. I, I, I guess I don't necessarily think it's a problem, but I'm willing to hear what you guys have to say. You're not quite sure. And you're not averse to exploring it a little bit and, and making sure that it's not a problem. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to do something that's going to make me sick. Yeah. You know, and I know like my sister, you know, struggles with her substance use and I know it causes a lot of problems in her life. So, I mean, I don't want to end up there, but I really think I'm fine, but I, mm -hmm. I'll hear, I'll hear anybody out. Yeah. It sounds like you're really clear on sort of the difference between use and problem use, like, and, and you you've seen that in your sister you don't want that to happen. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I see when people make really bad choices, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, yeah. but I, I'm not, you know, I have a job and I'm raising my kids and I take care of my stuff. So I, you know, for part of me is like, well, if this is what I do, then it's my mm -hmm. business. You've got a lot of stuff going for you. You got your kid, you got your job, you mm -hmm. take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you don't want, you don't want to lose any of that or jeopardize any of that or have anything get in the way of those important things. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about um, your use. T just tell me, you said you did some pills and, and we tell me, just tell me a little bit about that. If that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Well, if, you know, especially if I've had like a long day or a long week, once I make dinner and get the kids in bed, I might, um, you know, take a oxycodone or maybe it's the benzo. Sometimes I just smoke some weed, but it's just something I do at the end of my day to kind of just kick back, relax, watch Netflix. And like I said, I don't drink alcohol. And so, um, you know, there's not a lot of options if you don't drink alcohol. So 
that, that that's just my preferred preferred thing to do. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like that's most nights you're doing something, weed, benzo, opioid, something to take the edge off. I mean, not every day, but mm -hmm. you know, probably four or five nights a week. Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm using it in the morning or anything. And it's not like I go to work high. Mm -hmm. you, you've, you've set that boundary and you've been able to maintain that. You can, you can say, this is not, I'm not going to use in these situations. And you make that, you, you're able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't want to lose my job. You know, I'm not stupid. You don't want to lose your job. Yeah. No. So you talked about what you like about it, right? It kind of takes the edge off for you. It's how you chill out in the evening after you put your kids to bed. And that's certainly, if you talk to people who um, use benzos or opioids or weed, that's pretty common things for people to say about it. And I also, it's, it's not unusual that people who have those things that they like about it also have a couple things that they don't like about it. And I'm just wondering what those things are for you. Yeah. I mean, I suppose what I've thought about is like, if there was an emergency, you know, just cause the kids are in bed doesn't mean there can't be an emergency. So I've thought, you know, in the past, I found myself a couple of times nodding off a little bit on the couch and, um, you know, a kid might get up and need some help and they have to kind of, you know, come over and shake me a little bit. I don't hear them calling out. So I thought, and though so far, like I said, nothing's bad has happened, but I've thought, you know, if, if for some reason there was a fire or, you know, something bigger was going on that, you know, it wouldn't be good if I, if I was passed out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you worry about your kid's safety about Absolutely. Or not. Yeah. Yeah. What else? What else concerns you? Um, I mean, a couple times, like, you know, I hadn't cut back in the past because a couple times I felt, I don't know, I'd feel just a little nauseous and sick, like when I wasn't using them. And so I just, you know, kind of gave myself some boundaries that this can't be every night. Like I said, it's, you know, me for four nights a week. And so, um, I definitely don't want to do something that's going to make me sick. And the other part is sometimes it gets expensive, you know, so there's a cost associated with it. And I know sometimes we, you know, struggle at the end of the month to make sure all the bills are paid. And I never want those things to get in the way. Like I don't want my weed to, to be more important than maybe a new outfit for my daughter or something. Yeah, again, sort of worrying about the impact on your kids, right? Like, is this taking money from something else for my kids? Is this, is this, you know, is it, is it jeopardizing their safety or taking money from, from the kids? And, and then also noticing that when you weren't using, you weren't feeling well, that there were times when your use had gotten to the, into a more regular use pattern. And then when you weren't using, you were feeling sick and, and you, and you, Try to cut back. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think? So let's just say you don't do anything about this. You just keep doing things in the way that you've been doing them. What do you think the the worst thing that could happen would be? Well, I mean, like I said, I think it would just be consequences. Um, I mean, if I was able just to maintain what I'm doing, it would probably be fine. But I know, like I said, my sister and I have other people in my life that, you know, thought they were fine and then ended up kind of turning out to be a pretty severe addiction. So I do think about that and, you know, part of me feels safe. And then part of me feels like, why do I think I'm so special? <laughs> so, um, to avoid all that, like, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I do think about it, but it just doesn't some, it just doesn't feel like the time to quit is right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't want to lose your job. You don't want to jeopardize your kids. 
safety. You want to be able to still buy them things. You don't want to feel sick, you know, and you don't want to have it end up being a more severe problem. You've seen that happen and you don't want that. Yeah. 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 Well, I just don't want anybody, you know, it doesn't, even when the doctor was asking me about it, it's like, I'm hesitant to talk about it because I don't want somebody just to come along and tell me like I have to quit because that's, you know, that's just not a conversation I'm willing to have right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I forgot to say this at the beginning, but, you know, I, when anybody talks to you about your use of alcohol or drugs, I think it, it needs to be made really clear that whether or not what you do whether or not you quit or cut down or continue to use or whatever it is that you do, it has to be your decision that you're the one who gets to make all the decisions about how you use alcohol and drugs. That's that, that people can have conversations with you. I can have a conversation with you to help guide you and help you make a decision, but I can't make that decision for you. I shouldn't be making that decision for you. It's, it's really up to you. So if you ever start to feel like that's not up to you, you need to just let me know. Okay. That's helpful. Yeah. So Chris, just, I just want to just one last thing. I, I, if you did decide you wanted to do something about how you're using, um, the pills and, and weed, what about you would make that change possible? If you, if you decided like, I don't know, what do you got going for you that would help you? If you decide it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I'd just have to probably find other ways to relax, you know, and other things that kind of calmed me down or took away some of the anxious feelings. I don't want to like suddenly not be able to sleep or, Mm -hmm. um, you know, just feel super anxious at the end of the night or the end of the day. It just I'd need other things to take, to take the edge off. And I don't know, I haven't had a lot of other experiences. You know, I hear people do things, but I'm like, I'm not going to go running at 10 PM. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you could come up with a list of some things that would be equally good or effective at dealing with your anxiety, your stress, a way to systematically kind of whoof at the end of the day, you'd be you'd be open to that. And that would be one of the things that would need to be in place for you to consider stopping yeah. the drugs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd have, I'd, like I said, my intention and I, I don't know what, you know, all this is really, but my intention isn't to quit, but I'd be, you know, if you or the doctor think that like I could get sick or I could get addicted to this stuff, then, you know, I'd be willing to look at other things you know, other ways to do that, especially if, you know, as long as they don't cost a lot or something, I don't want like a bunch of fancy gadgets or apps that I have to log into or any of that. Yeah. Yeah. So I know that, uh, I got to let you go catch your bus. So I'm just wondering, I'm I'm just going to make sure we're on the same page here. So you're using some pills and some marijuana, some nights a week and you're using it to take the edge off to decompress after your stressful long day and what and it's effective for that and what it isn't effective for is a little bit of worry around what if I'm nodding off what if my kids can't wake me up and something happens they need me for some kind of an emergency or just need me you sometimes Uh, are a little bit sick when you cut back, when you've cut back in the past, you've been sick and you're wondering about, well, how much am I using that I'm becoming sick? And you also are struggling sometimes to read, to keep enough money till the end of the month. If you kept up just the way things are now, you worry that it could cross that line, that it could cross the line from casual use into more problem use. You've seen that happen with people and you wonder how you're going to keep yourself from becoming somebody who crosses that line. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to jeopardize your kids, your, their safety, your family, your money, all that other stuff. And you aren't averse 
to thinking about finding some other ways to deal with the stress, finding some ways to, to, to think about a possible replacement for the pills. Is that about yeah. right? Did I, yeah. What, yeah. what did I miss? What did I not? I don't think you really missed anything. I think. Yeah. So, so if you're, if you would be interested, Chris, if this would work for you, what I'd like to do is I'd like to invite you to come back and, and just continue to have conversations with me about what you, again, you're in charge, what you might want to do about these pills and the marijuana. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, is that something that you would be interested in? Yeah, I'm open to that. Okay. You know, if we can schedule it, maybe when I see the doctor, it's helpful because mm -hmm. yes, absolutely. Have to take another day off work and that sort of thing. We, we could absolutely do that. We can, abs we can also, if you don't happen to have a doctor's appointment coming up, we can do it via the telephone or I can, mm. if you have a computer, we can do it on zoom. We can do it that way too. So whatever works for you, absolutely. That would be that we can work that out. Yeah. That would be nice to do it like over zoom. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm wondering if you would just be willing to just continue to kind of think about this how it's fitting, how it's not fitting mm -hmm. with who you are and what you want to be and where you want to get to. And, and we just pick up there when we, when we get together again next time. Sure. Sure. So I don't have to like do anything between now and then other than just kind of think about it. Yeah. I mean, again, it's totally up to you. We can, we can just keep talking about it or you could try something. It's completely up to you. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Well, so you can go ahead and make an appointment. The front desk has my whole schedule and then they also have my schedule for telehealth visits too. So you can make an appointment that way. Okay. Well, so, thank you. Thank you so much, Chris. You know, thinking about this and being willing to think about this and talk about this, it really, it shows you really want to do what's best for yourself and everybody else. So I really appreciate that. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Thanks. I look forward to seeing you again.